This is Tuesday of the week in the life. Yesterday you would have seen some odd clips I've put together. Didn't feel much yesterday as we were on a sourcing expedition. It's on Facebook Marketplace. Hang on. Let me get to my breath. I've only just got dressed and I'm out of breath. So today's plan is... First, I've got to cancel an order because the lady... She's had two weeks to pay and basically she said her boss isn't paying her till the end of the month. So I've got to cancel that order. I've got another order that the bloke wants to close up for the clothes. He's just been a pain in the butt because he's bought the item and not paid for it because he wants to close up off the accessories and stuff. Anyway, got to do that. Then I've got three orders to post, like pack post. So yeah, and I've got to do list 20 items. So that's fun. Relist 10 tonight and then five for the next few days. And then obviously add five on from new stock. And obviously I've got to film a charity shop video. How I process the stock video. And at some point today, this week, I've got to film a monthly reset. So that's everything I need to do this week. But yeah, I'm going to get on and show you me cancelling an order and stuff. Kind of. I'll show you what I can show you without breaching GDPR. But yeah see what we can do i'll let you know how i get on and then obviously i need to photograph because i've got to do the haul from sunday we also got another facebook pickup today and i also need to get some storage boxes but yeah i'm i felt a bit rough getting up this morning i felt that like i was full of head cold that seemed to have passed but i also want to order a couple of things on amazon because it's prime day i want to order something for mum's birthday and I think it's two things for me because I need a new strap for my watch because it's broke. And I need some bigger bungee cords for my trolley. Not that I'm going to need them this weekend because it's going to rain. Where is summer? At the moment we've got sun. So that's positive for now. How long will that last? God knows. So yeah. Don't know if we've got a dog coming or not because my mum sent him a text. My brother a text. My brother did not respond to text. My brother is useful, <laughs> useless at getting back to text. But the thing is, he'll either drop the dog off without warning, which will leave me in the tits up situation because Oreo is gorgeous. I love Oreo to bits. He's very needy. Very needy. Anyway, we'll see what happens. 
maybe this afternoon we'll have a dog. Maybe we won't have a dog. I know you've been seeing a lot of my old videos which had Jack still in them. Jack was my old border collie. He passed away in February, but all my videos were pre-filmed, so that's why you still see him. But now we've got Oreo, you will occasionally see Oreo. Anyway, I'm going to crack on. Wish me luck today, guys. <laughs> we do have a little visitor. Sit. Oreo, sit. Are you a good boy? No, you've come to see me, haven't you? Not sure what work I'm going to get done with him around because he's an absolute enjoyment but also very needy. Aren't you? He's a needy boy. What do you want? It's not very nice outside, it's very cold. And Mum's out at the moment taking her sisters to a doctor's appointment. <laughs> this is how needy he gets, look at him. It's not because he can't move, because he's got space. It is just... He wants attention all the time and if it's not on him, he's an unhappy boy. Anyway, he's also a scary cat because I haven't showed this video yet because I don't have it. Uh, can you get down a bit because your paws are very near the laptop -y. Laptop. He's crazy. Ah, uh, down. No, that's a new sofa. No. Well, not new. Come on, down we get. Down we get. what I have to deal with just for his editing just trying to save it and he's literally pushed himself pretty much onto my lap but then he just puts his head on the computer and you can literally just budge up a bit and I can still be close to him ah, no oh yeah bed good boy lay down no space good boy good boy no too close you think I'm a soft touch? And I'm not. I know your dad's a soft touch, but I'm not. You were a wash for that wasp. It was a bee, but I got it. No, 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 no. That side. That's where you go. That way. He's gonna be an absolute shit. Oh, no, he is. Right. No. Good boy. There we go. That's okay. You can have put your bum there. You can put that little foxy tail. He's literally got the fox tail. He's like, get off my tail. If I'm not allowed next you can't play on my tail. I've got to find out where I saved it to then. Because now I don't know. Let's see. So my dad deleted it. I didn't find it. His tail is tickling in my leg. This dog. What are you doing? Oh. oh no, your dad's forgotten you. Oh no, he's forgotten you. He's forgotten you. You've got to live with us now. You've got to live here now. No, get down. You think you've been forgotten too?
true. There's some more rain to come there as we go. But that will break up, and when the sunshine comes out, the temperatures will shoot up. Could see temperatures up to around uh, 26, maybe 27 degrees across some eastern areas. Nice when any sun breaks through the cloud north and west, but always cooler here. Temperatures tend to be in the upper teens. Now, as we go into Thursday night, takes us through to Friday, we're going to see the rain at times in Scotland, turning lighter and patchier. Some clear conditions in Northern Ireland. Should be largely dry for England and Wales though, but for all, it will be quite a humid and muggy night. Temperatures in the mid-teens for most as we go into the start of Friday. So a pretty warm starting level for Friday and overall a brighter day to come. That said, southern Scotland and around some Irish Sea coast, there'll be some low cloud and some drizzle to begin with. A bit more sunshine for Scotland Northern Ireland, certainly compared with today, and uh, with more sunshine through central eastern parts of England, East Wales, and even hotter day. You could see 31 the high on uh, Friday afternoon across the southeast corner, and temperatures into the low 20s, a bit more widely across Scotland Northern Ireland, maybe 22 degrees, 23 around the Murray Firth. Through Friday night into Saturday, outbreaks of rain then will become more dominant again in the west. It means a wetter day in the west on Saturday. Some of that rain could be heavy and thundery. An odd isolated heavy shower thunderstorm in the east, but with some sunshine as well, it still will feel quite warm here. Temperatures up to around 25 or 26 degrees, fresher in the west. And that fresher weather spreads to all as we go through into Sunday. We're back. Good morning, guys. We are packing now. So I'm going to really pack something into a box into a box just to make sure it's safe and secure so let's get today started i'm gonna put the tv back on but i'm packaging Time, that time. Yeah. Yeah. Then we put little corgi red little red tractor. Sold this for twenty five pounds. I really got all my money back on this because we sold the tractor shed all for forty. I'm sure it was forty forty five. And this was extra. Plus we sold the fine sound that came with it. Some roads in the area are closed. Members of the public are being asked for their views on the proposed routes of an underground pipeline to carry carbon waste. ExxonMobil wants to construct a pipe from Forley in Hampshire to the only identified offshore CO2 storage site in the English Channel. The aim is to transport millions of tonnes of carbon dioxide and bury it under the seabed. There are drop-in events for the public through August into September. I tell you, it's a bit as collapsed on me. The dangers of Today's a busy day. Into military land in Wiltshire. Last year, there were hundreds of incidents on Salisbury Plain where members of the public wandered into military areas, including several near misses during training exercises. Each silhouette has been made using the outline of a real soldier or local resident. In the last four months, we had 700... Uh, incursions, uh, that's people, uh, members of the public being in part of the training estate where they shouldn't be at a time that they shouldn't have been uh, and as a result sort of, we would describe that as being a potential near miss uh, and we have to stop training. We're stopping training to keep both the public safe and also the military that are training safe but of course the military then uh, don't get the benefits of the training that they will be taking part in. A chimney sweep from Gosport got a bit of a surprise when he rescued a sea duck stuck in a disused chimney flue. Okay, Neil Jarrett got a lot of concern for resident who'd seen feathers falling from her chimney. He says he's rescued lots of birds before, but never anything as large or powerful as this sea duck. Okay, let's get the... I can't wait. Everything can, like... 
Hi, good morning. Things are warming up over the next couple of days across the south. We'll see plenty of sunshine. Three places. And today, I think we'll see temperatures slightly higher than yesterday. A little bit of cloud out right. there. There will be clouds coming and going as we head through the morning, but a lot of sunshine. Should be dry as well today with night. The entire UV level with temperatures a little bit higher than yesterday. Just going to bowl this up. I do excess packaging. My mum tells me off. I believe it's the right thing to do. Parts, but most places dry and fairly warm with lows of 14 degrees. Another fine day tomorrow. Again, warm temperatures really climbing from what we've had today. Plenty of sunshine, light winds, and you can see highs of 28, maybe even 29 degrees as we head through tomorrow afternoon. But it will turn a bit more. So, yeah, I'm a, yeah, definitely overpacker. Onto the roads, we'll start with the A303 in Hampshire, where the westbound entry slip road for Salisbury Road, the A343, is closed for emergency repairs. That's the turn off for Middle Waller. Elsewhere, the A27 Southampton Road is partially blocked west out of Park Gate due to an accident at 7 to roundabout. And the centre of Reading, Marketplace is closed southbound due to a police incident. That's it for me. I'm back up. So that's going to go back in this box. It's going to be double packed. I just believe now, one of best packing with enough protection is, being more is the right thing to do with fragile items. In the Kent town where he lives. The late Peter Cushing is best remembered for his roles in the Hammer Horror movies as well as Star Wars and two sixty Doctor Who films. Stay up there. Our reporter Oliver Whitfield Nerji has the story. <laughs> Because he was Hammer House of Horror. That, that was the key thing. He, he did so much more. But globally, that's what he's known as the Hammer House of Horror. From Slay Lane, Dracula is found Helsing in six films to appearing in five Frankenstein movies. Peter Cushing was an icon from the 1950s onwards. Cast in more than a hundred titles brought him to global prominence. And I have left these to the last day of dispatch just because I've been lazy this week and my mum's sister is actually in hospital and I've had Oreo all week. Six years after the death of his wife, Cushing returned to acting, playing Grand Moff Tarkin in Star Wars Episode 4. Not everything went according to plan. The story on set. Um, is that he was getting on a little bit and his feet were hurting and he was meant to be wearing jack boots and he was allowed to wear carpet slippers on set and was filmed from the waist up was only. This of course was a huge threat for the rest of the cast and at the end of the shooting they made the doll there and the little carpet slippers to go with the doll to present to, to Peter at the end. <laughs> Cushing was no stranger to intergalactic battles and battle died in two spin-off Doctor Who films. Such him! With his fame came recognition. This is the OBE awarded by the late Queen in 1989. The actor would often be seen riding around town on his bike, which is in the exhibition. I'm going to double, double wrap that in a minute. As a keen watercolourist. The organisers believe that all ages can find an interest in Cushing's life. Different people remembering the different things. The older generation of the house. Uh, the so now that's going to get wrapped again. Sherlock Holmes. I know it's excessive for a little figure, but it's a delicate little figure. The show opens to the public names to ensure that Cushing's decades of dramatics and his links to the area are remembered well into the future. Oliver Whitfield, Neil Chetchy reporting from Whitsville, are you still scared? I'm not denying that those brief glimpses of our horror films still terrify me. Although they might look almost absurd oh, to, no. to, to a different generation. Um, we're going to tell you about Mr. Cameron, who retired as a lounge bar pianist 13 years ago, and then he thought his days of playing to an audience were behind him. 92 now, suddenly again, a lot of new fans. Right. Our reporter, Phil Connell, is meeting me. Now we're going to put it inside this box. Richard Cameron has played the piano for most of his 92 years. His talented fingers still as quick and as nimble as ever. I'm going to use that newspaper. On the side. Jonathan Bourne. 
Measure this. All my girlfriends seem to have gone absolutely mad. <laughs> there's one in Hungary, he sends everything over to Hungary, and there's a, I've got quite a following out there. It's a whole new fan base. Yeah. 28. With help from Carl, Richard's planning to post more videos in the coming weeks and months, proving it's never too late to show the world what you can do. Phil Connell, BBC News. Great play. It's still box. That's it from breakfast for tomorrow. Now I'm BBC Morning Live. Morning Live. Still in the 20s. Thank you. Well, coming up, we expose how scammers have stolen thousands from the family of Team GB swimmer Matt Richards, all because they tried to buy a ticket to see him compete in the Paris Olympics. First, Brits are unknowingly buying fake medication online to deal with a global shortage. We'll explain how to check if what you're buying is real. And BBC radio legend Tony Blackburn is celebrating 60 years on the airwaves and telling us how he once fell asleep whilst broadcasting to me. £20 this went for. <laughs> Might see this today in the future. Just on time to say hello to this lovely lot. Dr. Ranch, consumer journalist Rebecca Wilcox, radio broadcasting legend Tony Black. Oh, it is so God. lovely to see you. to be here. And Rap One. Oh, uh, there you go. I mean, you're yeah. right. <laughs> I feel like I've done three more laps. Uh, what is it? Just over a week yeah. till the Paris Olympics. Uh, you did it back in the day, 2008. Long time ago. Oh, look, I mean, look at that. Can I just that. say, I will never actually go like that again. 100 metres. Wow, never ever look like that. I mean, you were amazing. Man. Well, I would never look like that, actually, come to think of it the way. Which is your problem. Uh, and now you, you're on the other side. Yeah. You'll be taking over from here, really, I in the be. mornings with JJ Chalmers. For a couple of weeks, it's going to be us, myself, JJ Chalmers, the morning show. We're so excited. All the live sport. Bring it to you every day. 16 days of it. How are the athletes feeling around that? It's four yeah. years of prep. It's probably more real, yeah. isn't it? How All the prep. They'll just be in the position now where they're like, OK, it's here now. It's so time to get ready. Time to get into the athlete's village, settle down. And have their kit. It's going to be so exciting for a lot of them, especially if it's their first time. So, looking forward to it. Oh, excited about it. This is just great, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To watch across the BBC, you won't miss a thing. Um, we have got a shocking story to do with the Olympics, though. In 10 minutes, we're finding out how fraudsters are targeting people hoping to see Team GB in action, including Olympic gold medalist, world champion swimmer Matt Richards' mum. Yeah, and staying on the scans, the British Medical Journal maybe issued a warning of deep fakes yeah. and TV doctors' rap. This is not fun. Bit of a scam going on here. It is a horrible story that's that's developing. So basically, these deep fakes, they're fake images created by a computer, giving the impression it's a well-known television doctor advertising products that they they can't advertise because they're not real, it's computer-generated image. And what's really, really right. got me this morning reading this is because the late Dr. Michael Mosley 
is one of the images they're using. They're pretending he is advertising a product, inviting people to buy this medication. Shocking. And he's no longer with us, as we know, and it's not a real image. It is horrible. And these medications should not be bought. They could be incredibly dangerous, as Ranger knows better than anyone. Yeah, so um, there's so many things wrong with this. Firstly, um, these deepfakes are impersonating doctors, and it's actually illegal to impersonate a doctor in this country, but, but you cannot hold the creators to account because they're really difficult to track down, and actually people are calling for social media platforms and companies to start taking more responsibility for this. But the other thing is that some of them are promoting inappropriate uses for medication or promoting health supplements and making wild health claims or actually promoting fake medicines, all of which could be seriously harmful. So if anyone comes across any of this, and it is quite hard to spot something between 25 to 50% of people on these fake things from um, their genuine counterparts, yeah. if you do spot one, please report it. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk more with you at what, uh, 945, uh, yeah. about 50 minutes, time, about fake medication, about yeah. making sure you're getting what you're paying for, the real thing, uh, that's a range in a bit. And then just after that, 10 minutes after that, 955, we're putting the brakes on middle lane hogging. Ooh. Right, Tony? Ooh. <laughs> So angry. It's the driving habit that is actually illegal and could land you with a fine and three points on your license. Oh. What are they doing? Well, you'll find out, Tony. Find out. Don't start. Oh, let's do it. Don't have the time right now, Tony. And straight after that, home insurance premiums, they've risen by a third in the last 12 months. So, we have had to cut the cost. And the best day to bag a deal, yeah. put it in your diary. The day that's the way to do it. Uh, 10.15, we're saving you some cash on cleaning by showing you how you can use your morning cupper to clean everything from windows to pots and pans. It does work. It does work. And in the last Olympic Games in Tokyo, sport climbing, it made its debut, attracting a whole new fan base. Look at them. Like yeah. actual superheroes going up that wall. Like it's, gladiators. It is. I was just like thinking that. It's exactly like gladiators. We're into that, aren't we? We are. At 10.30, we'll be beating this year's British hopeful goal. Yeah, uh, he's already had his caffeine uh, for the day. Neil Jones usually climbing up the walls when he gets in. That's so much energy. Let's see what we've got today, please. Actually, I'd love to see that on the Olympics. Sit there climbing up the wall and tell you a gladiator comes in. Brilliant. Just change the whole aspect of it. Maybe um, that's where they got the idea in the first place. Okay, bringing the sound up just like a bumblebee. Um, we are bringing you some moves from the champion, Hamza Angelita. And we have got the swinging of the arms, the bird movement. And this is actually the first time we've ever had Afro beats on Strictly. And I want more of it. Yes. Definitely more of it. Feels okay. good, doesn't it? Feels good. We're going to love hearing from you as well. So, if you have got a question for any of the gang, you can email morninglive at bbc.co.uk. Or you can WhatsApp us on 0800 032 1100. The quickest way is to scan the QR code on the bottom of the screen. And just a reminder, don't call it. It's just all messages. Uh, now, an issue that regularly fills our inbox is nightmare neighbours. Summer is the time that sees a surge in reports and complaints. Obvious, isn't it? Get out of the garden, maybe a few drinks, get the speakers out there as well. But what point does it become more than a nuisance? Yeah, so I think when we say more than a nuisance, we're really talking about where, when it becomes something that you would actually have to involve potentially the police. And, and that's what I want to make clear today, because it has to be a line that is crossed in order for you to go... So that's an extreme measure. And it's really about what the behaviour is. So we're talking about something not just in the garden with a bit of music and a, and a, and a few drinks perhaps and a barbecue that maybe goes on a bit too long. That's one thing. But if we're talking about threats or harassment or threats of damage to your property or threats of assault, these are then when it escalates into what could be a police matter as opposed to something which is a civil dispute between two neighbours. So there is a distinct difference between the two. And noise is a pretty common complaint, isn't it? There's a hefty fine for it, too. Yeah, we're not having a go at you for this, Geoffrey. You'll go out and buy the uh, product you, but you do look a bit sheepish, yes. <laughs> noise is throw a good party. <laughs> yeah. happy, man. It is a very common complaint that neighbours say. Um, actually, we can see here that the maximum fine people may not realise, is up to £5,000. Exactly. OK, I'm stopping those on by. Silent discos from now on. <laughs> yeah, £5,000. It's the maximum fine, but it is a lot of money, and people don't realise. And this is something that probably one in five people have had some sort of noise complaint for the neighbour at some point. So there's a lot of people will know about this. Now, between the hours of 11pm and 7am, noise should be kept to a minimum. So outside of that, 
if you are causing what's thought as, as a nuisance, then that is where it goes too far, and it shouldn't be done, and you must rein it in, and that's enough. So, deal with it now. There we go. There's a few things that we can do. Have a look at this. First of all, contact your neighbour. If they are having a party and it goes on too long, or they're having building work and it's going on too late, and you cannot have a normal quality of life, speak to them first. So before thinking, do you know what else can I do? Can I take it to the council? Can I involve other people? Can I involve their partners? Can I speak to your neighbours? Because so many people won't actually have taken that step. And very often, they might not even know that the noise is going into your property. They might not know how much you're hearing about that. They might not know the building work is going on this late. So there's things that you can do straight away uh, speaking to them. Secondly, really important, keeping what's known as a new diet. Now this is everything that's going on, the times, explain what's going on. I don't mean just physically writing it down, that's really important. It could be photographs, it could be video recordings, it could be sound recordings, if it's say building work or the party. So you've got that evidential package that you can pass on to the authorities if you need to. That's really, really important. Now, once you've got those things, then the third step, I would say, is contacting your local council, because within there, they will have an environmental health person who can deal with these sorts of matters, and then you can supply them with the evidence that you've collated and say, look, this is what's going on. I can't have a reasonable quality of life because of what's going on. Can you yeah, do that? Well. So if it's a single one-off incident, such as a party yeah. or late-night barbecue that's gone on far too late or whatever it is, yes, they could be doing something a little bit wrong, the council will lock it, they're unlikely to do any sort of investigation for a single one, or if there's a series of them, they need to be aware because they could then take further action. Because no neighbour should have to live in fear, no neighbour should have to feel like a prisoner in the So nothing's acceptable to be going on, it's just we don't we need, to, we need to report it to the council so action can be taken. Yeah, there's also that on my website, BBC. Because it's hot already. Uh, slash morning live. So, so one off party, you kind of go, okay, fine, maybe the neighbours told you about it and, and you carry on. But it can get serious. And it, there's one message here, um, and, and it's it's talking about being uncomfortable in your own home. Um, uh, it says, I live in a flat. Uh, my neighbour has music on at all hours of the day and night, bangs about, and has put glue in my door lock because I complained to the council. Uh, I've had a video doorbell installed, and she does intimidating gestures in the camera. Uh, this has been going on for two years. The council aren't helping. Do you have any advice? See that? Two years. Being yeah. comfortable in your home for two years. Okay, that, that's that, tough. that does sound horrible and all those things described. No, no one should have to do that. So it's really good. That's all to hear. Okay, so first of all, this person has said they have contacted the council and nothing seems to have happened. Obviously, follow up with that would be my number one. Follow up with the council explaining. Keeping the nuisance diary, really, really important. So what I've explained about keeping all the, the video footage that they might be able to get from this video doorbell, all the recordings of what's happened, any other evidence, any photographs, writing down the time, the places where anything's happened. Right. What they also mention there is locks in a, a glue in the lock, which that is incredibly dangerous if that's happened. That's also highly illegal. That's that's horrible. Damage. Damage. That's criminal damage, that's vandalism, that's a criminal offence. So I would say for something like this, I would actually suggest calling the police on 101, the non-emergency police number, unless the crime's happening there and then, in which case it would be my mind. The property's been damaged. property's yeah, been damaged. That is a crime. So this person, I would advise speaking on 101, you can do a report online as well, yeah. and speaking to them, explaining the situation. Now, this is, if this has been going on for two years, this, to me, as a former cop, this seems to be a course of conduct which could make it come back.
dress that sold for £65 on 5p. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous dress. It's going off to America. It's Build a Bear Hello Kitty. This poster is ours, this library is ours, this traffic, these traffic lights are ours. We need to take pride in our own community and make sure that these kind of things can't happen here. The Home Secretary for Beth Cooper has condemned the violence, saying local officials will work closely with the community to provide support and reassurance to prevent further disturbances. The scale of last night's disorder is evident today, unlike the reasons behind it. But we have not got up to good weather. It's drizzling back in my So Moss End is Bracknell, which is a half an hour journey, 20 minute journey. I don't know. I'm going to put the postcode in in a minute. We're going to get off and just pray because Prospect Park's not on and they haven't got this. Fingers crossed. But it does not look very good. <laughs> I mean, some things I've just brought away. Now, I'm going back Monday. Yeah. She's got hot and hot. She's got PJ mask. She's got Paw Patrol. She thinks she's got Annabelle and her upstairs. Oh, wow. Um, I've bought this and I've got some there in the back seat. What's in the back seat? She's going to sort out this load of stuff, which she's going to sort out. Oh, brilliant. Oh. What I've done... Yeah. Paid her. Yeah. And I said, well, actually, I think it's worth a bit more than yeah. that. Um, so, because she's given some of it to the hospice. And I said, well, how about 70? And I've paid us half of it. I'm going to pay the other half on Monday when she sorted it out. She can have her basket back. Yeah. I need to wash my hands. Um, but in that bag at the back, there's loads of stuff. Figures, 
She's got loads and loads and loads of super Pleasant. wings. Oh, cool. Um, Chunky. I don't think that's the right strap somehow, but... There it is. I couldn't see a key on it. There. Oh, right. That's the key. I don't know what it's like inside, because I didn't look. Oh, okay, but that is in... Um, I've got to build a bare sky there. Yeah, I saw that. See, these things like this will go back to a boot cell. These bigger Paw Patrols, but... That's a build a bear. Ryan's World, but that can go with a boy's wardrobe if we get another one. What sounds like Kung Fu Panda? It's called Ryan's World. Ryan's World. Combo Panda. Oh, com yeah, from Ryan's World. That's brand new. I can just go to a boot sale. Yeah, so can that. Yeah, I didn't, I wasn't going to say start getting too picky. No. Because I said to her, you know, I'm happy to take it and sort it all at home. And she said, so, there, she's going to go through it all and. Just promise not to sell it to anybody else. Oh, baby love, because I didn't know how long you were going to be. Because obviously, I saw what it said on there, and there was loads of comments saying, What's your Lego? What's your. I didn't see any Lego. That's probably the Lego, which. Well, no, I told she's got a house full of stuff, love. It is. Because it said from 43 years or something of storage or something. Hoarding, I think is the word. Well, you don't know if she was like a nurse. I said she can't even get into her garage. God, there was a room, a complete room. As you open the door, it's just stacked. But it's not stacked, it's... A bit like us. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, because I was like, you've only got the front seat. What money did you take out of that hand? Uh, out of my pocket. Right, that's right. I wasn't sure if you used my money or... No, I used um, what I should have done. I used it out of this, shouldn't I? Well, yeah, I would have paid, got it I'll out. I'll take it back out of this, but I gave her 35 quid. Because I was well, she hasn't got one big Paw Patrol tower, she's got three. She said, Do you want? I said, I'll be honest. I said, We got one. <laughs> no, we haven't, but, but there's a in the back, there's yeah, the castle and um, all that blue bag. Because I've got a game. <laughs> I don't know where we're going to put it, and that's the honest truth. <laughs> I was joking. There's another scar uh, chase chase there yeah that one can go back to a boot cell but we can get a couple quick that one we'll get three for because it's a bigger one that one we'll get two for that is aladdin i don't know what that is it's this it's aladdin but i don't know what from i know what it's from it's like a, a cade a, out of grabbing machine right and she's got some fireman and sound i mean what she ain't got is unbelievable <laughs> i was talking to kelly because i said oh she asked me how i did there this morning i said all right it didn't do too bad and then I said, oh, mum's just gone off to a little garage sale. I don't think she'll be long. And then it got to an hour later and I said, oh, she's... She, Kelly said, has she got back yet? What she got? And I said, I haven't heard from her. It's been an hour. <laughs> so... Well, you better take your sandals in and... Uh, I don't know where well, let's, I've got my haul to do in the kitchen with that banjee. I think we ought to have a tidy up by that gas beater. Yeah, I'm going to this one. Right, we'll oh. sort something. Let's just go in for a minute. Yeah, I need a drink. <laughs> 